Hey everyone, welcome back to Coastal Drones Weekly Drone News, your one-stop shop for everything that's flying, floating, and probably even leaking. We've got a lot to cover this week from major FAA rule changes, new gear, juicy leaks, and yes, even a tourist getting fined for six figures for flying where they shouldn't. Let's get into it. The FAA just dropped a massive proposal over 700 pages outlining their plan to allow routine beyond visual line of sight operations without needing a waiver. Transportation Secretary Sean P. Duffy announced it as a step forward for national security and drone innovation. Now, some of you are probably wondering, does this mean that DJI is on the chopping block? Well, let's be clear. This announcement highlights US manufacturers and operators, but it doesn't name or ban any specific brands, including DJI. And here's why. Regulating specific hardware isn't in the FAA's wheelhouse. That kind of ban would have to come through Congress. So for now, DJI isn't going anywhere, at least from the FAA's perspective. Customs and border protection, that's a whole different story. So here's what's in the FAA's proposal. Operators are gonna need to launch from FAA approved sites and the flights are gonna to need to stay under 400 feet AGL or above ground. There's gonna be two tiers of certification, a permit for low risk operations, which is gonna be a faster approval process, and there'll be a certificate for higher risk operations. The operational limits will depend on the aircraft and population density in the area that the drone is flying. And yeah, of course, expect more detailed record keeping, so log books and paper and lots more like Thick books. If you study the Canadian Level 1 Complex Operations rules, some of this might sound familiar. We're not as versed on the new FAA drone laws beyond the Part 107, so if you want a deep dive, check out Pilot Institute's great breakdown right after this video. Don't click it yet, but click it later. Hover Air just dropped a new flying camera, the Hover Air Aqua. So this drone doesn't use a controller by default. It's meant to fly itself and capture content around you, similar to how the DJI Neo has the follow mode. It's, it's a hover air drone. There's been other hover air drones that also do this. They're, they're flying selfie drones. But what makes the Aqua stand out? Well, it's fully waterproof. It's built for water sports, beach days, and all the places you normally wouldn't bring a drone. So there's some quick specs that we've got. It's 4K at 100 frames a second. It's got a one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor. It's under 249 grams. That's good because basically you can fly it almost everywhere in Canada. Level seven wind resistance, a top speed of 55 kilometers per hour, which is this many miles per hour. And it comes with a tracking beacon for recovery, unlike DJI who just abandoned their beacon. So we're excited to see some fresh competition in the micro drone market, but Hover Air's pricing is usually on the premium side. So let's see where this one lands at when it actually hits the stores. And now back to your regular leak programming. So shout out to Quadro News over on X, AKA Igor Bogdanov. Most of these leaks have been coming through him. He's been a busy little beaver punching out a, a ton of leaks or punching out holes to cause leaks. I, I don't know. So DJI Mic 3, right? The number must continue to go up. It's expected to drop originally with the Osmo 360, but it hasn't. So here's what we know so far, what we've seen. 32-bit float recording, which is clip proof. It has adaptive gain control, dual level noise cancellation, up to 14 hours of onboard transmitter recording. The receiver has a 1.1 inch LED screen on it, which is great. There's 28 hours of battery life total, including the case. But one cool thing is you can sync up to four mics with eight cameras and has a 400 meter dual band signal range. That's not practical in any normal circumstance, but what that means is it's got a very strong signal, so it should survive 30 meters without any kind of breakup. Time code sync for smooth editing, aka mashing together multiple cameras. But one thing, so far there's no sign of a lav input, which means if you're using a lavalier microphone, you may not be able to do that because they've gone with this more compact transmitters similar to what the DJI Mic Mini was. Does that mean probably there's gonna be a Mic 3 Pro down the road? So more on the Insta360 drone. Leak video and photos show Insta360's new drone, the Anti-Gravity Project, in action. One big takeaway that we saw, it looks like the test pod has been wearing FPV style goggles, so it's probably FPV capable. That's gonna be interesting considering that it has like a top and a bottom lens, like it's gonna to have to mash that together in real time and there might be some latency. So let's see what this actually turns out to be. And photos are starting to surface of an updated GoPro 360 camera. 
Details are still a little light, but it's clearly in development and out in the wild being tested. Considering that the original GoPro Max came out in 2020, it's time for a refresh. So, so far we've seen potential replaceable lenses, something that the Osmo 360 does not have. And the lenses look to be centered in the body, meaning that there's better ergonomics and the stitching is gonna be so much better compared to having a weird offset lens from that invisible selfie stick. And finally, the case looks to be covered in cooling fins, which means potentially two things, good water sealing, and probably a big bump in resolution due to a much more powerful, much bigger, beefier onboard chip. And this video is brought to you by us, CoastalDrone.co. Whether you're just starting out or working towards commercial operations, we've got training for you. From basic to advanced, get yourself to 100% with our easy to use online training. So check out CoastalDrone.co, take the course, pass the test, and fly with confidence. A Mini 5 Pro leak showed up on Reddit and X last week, and so far just a single quasi-leaked promo image and maybe a box photo, but there's some speculation about a one inch sensor, probably a one over 1.1 inch and not a full one inch like the Air, and maybe even a variable aperture, but I, I don't think so, probably not. You can kind of see the aperture listed on the promo image on the little left side if you enhance. So it's still early days, but it's the kind of the upgrade that the Mini 4 Pro could use. And the timing for an update is starting to make sense with the fall shopping season just around the corner. So if DJI keeps to their usual release timeline, we'd expect a drop within the next month or so. So a few quick hits from around the drone world to wrap things up. Tourist has been fined $231,000. So a British tourist flew a drone during a festival in Tenerife. No license, no insurance, and no clue. The police were able to track the drone down back to his hotel where he admitted to everything. Now he owes 200,000 euros, which is 231,000 US. That's a big huevo. So an update on the Kerrville helicopter drone incident we reported on a while back. Lawmakers have confirmed the drone involved in the July 7th Texas helicopter incident was actually part of the official search and rescue operation. It turns out the drone stalled midair and went into return to home mode, and that contradicts earlier reports that blamed a rogue drone operator. So a little bit of miscommunication and confusion there, unfortunately. So Teledyne Fleur has announced it will stop selling its Cirrus drone by August 31st of this year. They'll keep supporting the platform until September 2027. The reason? The company is shifting focus to its core, which is thermal imaging, embedded systems, and apparently AI. Three individuals were fined $6,000 total after drone footage was found showing them illegally fishing and camping in a provincial park in Ontario. The moral of the story, if you're gonna break the law, maybe don't film it or just don't break the law, period. North Dakota successfully completed a long range beyond line of sight delivery transporting medical supplies over 80 miles. It was done in collaboration with EyeSight Drone Services, Vantis, which is North Dakota's Beyond Visual Line of Sight Network, and the Northern Plains UAS Test Site. This was all part of Project Rural Reach, a federal program aimed at expanding access to rural healthcare using drone technology. So that's it for this week. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing, drop a comment with your thoughts on the FAA proposal, and we'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to check out Pilot Institute's coverage for the NPRM for way more details as they dive deep into the 700-page document. And remember, fly safe and fly smart, and we'll see you next week.